Oh man, did I go down a huge rabbit hole? One of the great things about my life right now is that I'm in a position where I can listen to different views and try to see what people's perspective is. I try not to look at intention because most people have a good intention. They're not evil and malicious. There are people out there like that. A few weeks ago, the Vatican came out with a proclamation on its stance with regards to the blessing of same-sex unions. Spoiler alert, the Catholic Church has not changed its position. They are not to be blessed because they are intrinsically disordered. And remember, this is not a critique of the individuals involved in these types of movements. I'm just looking at the movement as a whole and either seeing some connections or not. That's it. It's a critique. I am definitely not in a position to judge anyone. From what the church says, everything is summarized in the very beginning. Does the church have the power to give the blessing to unions of persons of the same sex? Response, negative. The document continues, for this reason, it is not listed to impart a blessing on relationships, on partnerships, even stable, that involves sexual activity outside of marriage, outside the indissoluble union of a man and a woman, open in itself to the transmission of life, which is the Catholic position, as is the case of the union between persons of the same sex. Blah, blah, blah. While, in fact, there are absolutely no grounds for considering homosexual unions to be in any way similar or even remotely analogous to God's plan for marriage and family, period. In this video, I'm not specifically talking about if the position is good or bad, just the fact that that is the Catholic position and that has always been the Catholic position. So when I read this document, it was like, yeah, that's why I left Catholicism. And the outrage was tangible, not just from the normal anti-Catholic, anti-religious, atheist, agnostic, not, not, not just those groups that always have a problem with Catholicism. The rabbit hole began when I saw these types of responses from groups inside the Catholic Church that label themselves as LGBT Catholics. It has always been a very logical thing for me to know what I'm dealing with. If I enter a group, if I have a friendship, a relationship, I like to know what I'm getting into. And with Catholicism, it seemed pretty clear how they looked at LGBT Catholics, or people in general, and I knew how to react. Before, I had to conform. I had to suppress these feelings that I had in order to be a good Catholic. And it just seemed like, if I want to be a Catholic, this is how I have to live. Acting upon my homosexual attraction was a sin. In any way, it was unnatural or, as the document puts it, intrinsically disordered. And there was no gray area. But then, reading more and more about these LGBT Catholics and what some of them propose, what changes they want within Catholicism, I was intrigued and I wanted to investigate a little. And I investigated a lot. The first group that I found was actually related to me in a conversation I had with Joseph Shambra in the last video, if you want to watch it, and it's called Courage International. Without getting into all of the nitty gritty details, from my little investigation, I could see that it seemed pretty Catholic to me, or what the Vatican related to be the Catholic message. I'm Father Philip Bochansky, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity to introduce you to an essential part of the Catholic Church's pastoral ministry in our day. All of our Courage chapters 
still pursue the same five goals that were established by that first courage group. Together with their chaplains, they strive to live chaste lives, to grow in prayer and dedication, to support one another from their experience, to form a fellowship based on chaste friendships, and to live lives that give good example to others. Joseph Shiambra talked about, it was kind of like a 12-step program, like Alcoholics Anonymous, and they just sat in a circle and talked about the things that they did since the last meeting that made them feel guilty, and some of them were very emotional. Well, I'll let Joseph describe it. There was sort of a, a round table and people would talk about their experiences and some of the stories were just really heartbreaking where somebody, not to be graphic, had gone to a public park or something and cruised. They were so torn up about it, what they had done. And, and I was like, wow, okay, I, maybe I should, I need to say something or, well, that's not permitted within the group. Oh. And I, I was oh. like, you know, this person is like in a crisis. Let's stop everything. Let's focus on him. Let's help him. Let's, let's think about it. Let's talk about it. What was the solution? Like, was there, you need to pray more? You need to like, what were they telling the people I, there? I don't know. Okay. So it just wasn't organized organized I mean, it's like i said it's structured but i don't know if it was addressed well they so, didn't that this is they, something that they moved I, on they moved on with a lot of catholic organizations or even just one-on-one -on -one with the priest they don't have answers they don't know what to say and the sooner this is from my experience and even what i learned in the seminary the the sooner that you can stop talking about this the better because everyone felt uncomfortable. I think there's a certain kind of anxiety on the part of bishops when it comes to dealing with same-sex attraction issues. Uh, two things are at play. One is that, uh, you know, these kind of issues just frighten people generally. They don't know how to deal with it. Families don't know how to deal with it. And the family of the church doesn't yet know how to deal with it. Also, you know, it's, it's hard for us to, to imagine asking our priests to do more, especially to do very difficult things. Like I said with Joseph Chambra. The, the sooner that you can stop talking about this, the better. And he also says that it was in the basement, secret. There was no signs about it in the parish. And the only way he knew about it was talking to a priest who gave him a number. And it was like he had to knock on the door three times and say the, the password. Not that extreme, but it wasn't a union of the members of Catholicism. It was a we'll give you your little space here, you deal with it. So we went from the white, if you want to say, and now we're going into the gray, the gray area. From my own experience and my own investigation, a key player of that gray area is a priest named Father James Martin. Hi, I'm Father Jim Martin. I'm a Jesuit priest and author of the book, Building a Bridge. And again, I'm not talking about intentions. I'm talking about logic and words. And one thing I can say about Father Martin is he is a master of language because he can say to a reporter, of course, I believe the doctrines of the church, how they speak about homosexuality. Of course I do. Look, I've never said anything about it. And then in his conversations to openly gay people, he can say that he is a supporter, an ally, a master of the gray area. It seems like he is a man of extreme empathy and he sees all of the persecution of the LGBT members, not only from Catholicism, but in general, in the world, and he wants to make them feel included. The problem is he tries to change Catholicism to make them feel better. Like I said in the beginning, I'm somebody who likes to know what I'm dealing with before I get into it. But there are many people, many LGBT people, who are Catholics or not, who follow the words of Father Martin, and they think, oh, this is the church. This is the church, this ambiguous language that makes me feel included. But then they get the remarks from the Vatican, and they are crushed. Over the last few months, I've heard from many LGBT Catholics 
who are struggling with their faith and their place in the church. The most common questions concern coming out, that is, sharing the reality of their orientation or identity with their family and friends. For many people, both young and old, coming out can be frightening, especially if they feel that their church or God is somehow against them. And this is the problem. This is the ambiguity, coming out. So a normal LGBTQ member of the community will think, oh, coming out. That means I'm telling the people that I love that I'm gay, and that means I'm actively going to live a gay life, openly going to live a gay life. That's, that's what they think. But that's not specifically what he's saying. Because in the Catholic Church, there's the separation between the attraction and the action. So you can interpret it to mean I'm coming out to my Catholic community that I have these same sex attractions. If you're Catholic, you will not act upon it. So that part is thrown out, but coming out and saying, hi, I have these issues because that's how gay people within the Catholic Church think of it, that it's an issue, it's a problem, it's a wound. But then the LGBTQ members will think, oh, that means like how everyone else comes out. Confusing gray area. Today I'm sitting down with Father James Martin, Jesuit priest, author, editor at large of American Media, and a compelling advocate for LGBTQ people in the Catholic Church. LGBT Catholics consider Father Martin an ally. What does that mean? To the outside world, outside of Catholicism, it's not the same as in the Catholic Church, but the word is ambiguous because you can interpret it the both ways. As a queer Catholic who's been rejected by some of my family, this conversation is deeply personal to me. Not just in terms of finding my own place in the Catholic Church, but more broadly, uh, in terms of how we move the Catholic Church towards justice and inclusion. Justice and inclusion. Move the church in that direction. That's what he wants as an LGBTQ Catholic. What does that mean? I can imagine that it means changing the Catholic doctrine. It's an option, but the Pope did just come out a few weeks ago with a very clear idea of what he thinks about LGBTQ people. Just saying. I think he's done more for LGBT people than any Pope. Pope Francis. So that's revolutionary. I know there are folks who might feel like it's not enough yet. The church, as they say, yeah. thinks in centuries, not days. Right. What would you say to the parish priest who wants to um, step out in faith, step out in courage, and redefining how the church has uh, interacted with the LGBTQ community? Uh, be not afraid, as Jesus said. I mean, the desire to do so is coming from God, right? So these feelings are basically God working through you. See the desire to respond to the LGBTQ person in the church as a holy thing, as a, as a call from God, and say yes. Like I said, I think he comes from a good heart. He wants to help people. He wants people to feel like they belong. I just think that in the end, those people have expectations that will not be fulfilled, at least not anytime soon. And because Father Martin has to appease both sides, not only the Catholics who are Catholic, but also the other ones who are expecting a change in Catholicism, whether that's good or bad, remember, I'm not talking about that. When the Vatican came out with their statement, his response was, very ambiguous. He didn't focus on the issues that he has spoken about before, especially the intrinsically disordered part. So he said, don't worry, it's just because the German bishops wanted to bless same-sex unions. This was just a reaction to them, don't worry. And you can imagine the reactions of the LGBTQ Catholics when they hear him, the church says something black and white and they listen to Father Martin and they still have hope. So we went from white, which 
with Courage International, Gray with Father Martin and others. And now we're going to Black. I'm not sure this was the right analogy to use. I just want to say they're very distinct and clear ideas. In this side we have Dignity USA. Let's look at their mission statement. Dignity USA works for respect and justice for people of all sexual orientations, genders, and gender identities, especially gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender persons. I'm sorry, non-binaries. Non You're not an especially. In the Catholic Church and the world through education, advocacy, and support. And later on, they declare that they advocate for change in the Catholic Church teaching on homosexuality and gender identity, etc. We know what their goal is. They want to change the Catholic Church's idea on homosexuality. That's very clear. That means that the current teaching is not something that they accept. Whether you agree or not, at least you can say that they are honest. This organization was kicked out of the Diocese of Detroit per an article from The Advocate online because the bishop says, the organization's rejection of the church's teaching on chastity is incompatible with the path of salvation on which Christ bids his church to travel and is at odds with the important work of the Courage International Movement apostolates. Courage promotes chastity and the current Catholic teaching, Dignity USA says, no, no, no. And after this recent letter from the Vatican about the blessing of the same-sex unions, the executive director of Dignity USA, Marianne Duddy Burke, said, Quote, the Vatican's denial of blessings to same-sex couples will exacerbate the pain and anger of LGBTQI Catholics and our families. This statement is hurtful to same-sex couples who live deeply loving and committed relationships, who hoped the church would be more affirming and even hoped to be married in the church someday. Unquote and that they will continue to advocate for these changes in the church. It doesn't matter that the church is rejecting, clearly rejecting their mission statement. It doesn't matter. They will still try to change the church. So just real quickly, I want to give a little reaction to a question in a Q&A video from two of the founders, I think, of this LGBTQ Catholic organization called Vine and Fig. I follow them on Instagram. I like to listen to what they say. It's interesting, like I said, to hear other people's opinions, but let's see what they say to this specific question, which is very eye-opening. How I think a normal LGBTQ Catholic would feel within Catholicism. Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Pat. We're the co-founders of Vine and Fig, an affirming resource and online community for queer Catholics. I like that guy's tattoos. Question is, do you feel conflicted staying Catholic when doctrine does not affirm LGBTQ plus life? Um, this is something that I had to deal with personally um, when I came out trying to reconcile uh, my Catholic identity with also my gay identity. I kept really searching for these clear-cut answers um, from the church or from kind of non-Catholic sources as well. Remember, these two gentlemen are not talking about the Catholic perspective of being gay, which means you're, you have the attraction, but you do not act upon it. Chastity. They're talking about being openly gay. I hope that's clear. And couldn't really find the answers that I was looking for. And I realized that I just needed to be comfortable with kind of this in between. Um, and it's definitely difficult, but I've also seen the fruitfulness uh, 
out of my relationship with my partner um, and how it's bringing me closer to God, having to, to love someone unconditionally, um, showing compassion, etc. And that's kind of helped me get through the gray, um, kind of this gray space. There are times when I'm conflicted, frequently conflicted. I think it's hard to be a, a queer Catholic. I think it's hard to be a, a Catholic. And maybe <laughs> that is the piece of it that before I was ever able to deal with my sexuality, I just realized that it's hard to be a Catholic in this world. And it's hard to have, I used to say when I was a, a teacher that if you don't have something that you disagree with, with the church, then you're not taking the faith seriously, just because there's so much that should be challenging you every single day. If you disagree with something, then that means you're doing doing it well. Then you're living Catholicism. If you d disagree with things, it's a challenge. It doesn't seem like a very healthy perspective on being in a community. Um, that it's going to push back on on you on, on some level. Um, so I think I've, I've just learned to kind of adapt that mentality and even spirituality to where I'm at with the, the church now in taking my sexuality more seriously and honestly and, and vulnerably um, and trying to, to piece it in with this bigger piece of just my life as a Catholic. I feel so much for those two gentlemen. I, I, I can't even imagine. I'm definitely not somebody who likes to live in a gray area. Obviously life, we don't know everything. There's some growing room and that's, that happens. But especially after what came out from the Vatican, it seems like it's very clear what the expectation is for a Catholic. And that pushback, he was saying, was actually those LGBTQ people pushing back on the community, pushing away from the community. They don't want to conform. Not that that's... It's hard to talk about these things and not say good or bad. I'm just saying it's a very difficult position to be put into and to put yourself into. One of the things that we all want is to belong. We want to feel united to others in beliefs because we know that with unity there is strength and support. And this whole phenomenon of LGBTQ Catholics, it seems dangerous. There are people who are telling you on one side to change to suppress who you are. And then on the other side, you have people telling you that, yes, you belong, we love you as you are. Oh, and don't worry about those teachings that want you to suppress who you are. No, 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 don't worry about that. We're gonna change it, even though the organization keeps putting their foot down and saying no. And again, who's in the middle of all of this? The individual. They're the ones who get hurt. And not to mention the gray area. I, I don't know how to even talk about that. It turns out Catholicism remains Catholicism. The question is, what do you believe? If you would like to help support me, and my page and my work, everything that I'm doing. I have a page on Ko-fi, which is kind of like Patreon, where you can go and donate however much you want, however much you're able. And I also put up there some pages for those who donate uh, from my book. And every week I'm going to be putting more and more. So if you're interested, you can check it out. I will leave a link down below. Thank you. And like this video and subscribe to my channel. Tell people about it. There's only so much I can do alone and I really do depend on you guys for helping spread the word and not 
the word, but my word. The Bible according to Francis. I'm gonna go now. Mm -hmm.